Well, well, well. Oh, you're so creative, guys. That's just nice. Even see a Polaris graph. Hello, everyone. So we're going to start the lighting talks. Um, just a re quick reminder, uh, we still need some of your presentations to be there. So please send them to info our base oscw.space uh, we need that as app so we can smoothly switch from one um, one presentation to another okay so how this will go on so we have like uh, how many one two three four five six presentations for those lightning talks each one of you has four minutes to pitch your idea or project or or whatever it is and um and this would be four minutes shop so your microphone will be turned off so so i, I will uh, warn you at one minute left me or montos so take care of this are we all ready can you say hey can you say hi you Hey. Yeah. Yo. Hi. Hi. Good. Good. <laughs> Very good. So uh, if you're ready, then we're going to start. We're four minutes left, late, late, but that's OK. We have a buffer after that. And this is with Arthur. So Arthur, go ahead with your 1UPCDU. The screen is yours. And you have okay. to on camera, yeah, if you wish. Uh, then I do that. Yeah, as you wish. So, going to present um, this one unit uh, power conditioning and distribution unit. And let's first um, think about what is a PCDU because it's a abbreviation that maybe in, that's not so familiar to uh, many of you. But uh, PCDU. Uh, is an integral part uh, of an electrical power system, so EPS. Well, EPS is the system that supplies your um, satellite with power, um, and an EPS usually is composed um, of uh, input power, the solar panels, um, and um, a way to store power in between, and uh, for this we use uh, batteries, mostly lithium-ion batteries nowadays. Um, and the PCDU really is the thing that uh, manages those two components, so the power source and and the power storage, and then provides stable output power um, to the rest of the satellite. So there's, um, since the power system uh, is the, the most critical system of each satellite, uh, without functioning power system, you can just uh, launch uh, a stone. Um, so that thing must work, and there's a lot of um, systems um, that are being developed. So why yet another one? Well, the reason is we want to um, create a very robust but yet simple uh, PCDU um, that is also modular and can be um, extended by you. Uh, we focus on a single output uh, line that's a 5 volt. Uh, so a single output power voltage, no 3.3 volt is included here because this one you can uh, uh, create locally using uh, low dropout uh, voltage regulators at the points that you need them. So the, the advantage is we focus on providing a really stable and powerful 5 volt line, at least 5 watt, maybe hopefully even more. Um, and it should be completely fail safe. So if a component fails, then that should not lead to uh, a failure of the system. That's the concept of redundancy. Uh, and the other uh, unique feature is probably to have this uh, CAN interface to, uh, for commanding and monitoring. Um, here's the um, schematic. Um, well, you probably will not be able to decipher any details here, but it's, you can look into the repository just to show you here that everything fits uh, on one sheet of paper if the sheet of paper is large enough. Um, and uh, here's some more details. So here's the input um, section solar panels. I have one minute left, I know. Uh, the regulation of the input, um, the battery chargers. Um, here the uh, 
uh, um, stable output power uh, um, switches here. And here is the interface to the monitoring and control unit. Um, here is uh, the prototype we have developed so far. Um, and yeah, the next step would be to integrate this uh, CAN uh, interface. So the microcontroller, select the microcontroller for this project, maybe STM32. And then once it's done, um, test it and initial, um, finalize the PCB. Um, yeah, I would be happy if you join the project and create uh, uh, the first robust open source failsafe uh, power system. Thank Peace you, Arthur. You. you know where to find Arthur. It's very cool. So no questions asked, but one, how did you like that? You have to say yes in your microphone if you liked it. And the louder it is, the better it is. So I, I can expect some yes. 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 Very yes. good. Very good. Yes. So uh, Louis, you will be next. So uh, Louis, uh, where where are you? I'm here. So, no, I'm in. Uh, where are you situated? Where do you work? I just yes, just I'm in. Uh, uh, I'm in Paris right now. I work with uh, Boris. Maybe you know uh, him. Yeah, yeah. And so yes, cool. Cool. Now, so uh, Louis, this is your four minutes. Go ahead. And uh, I don't know if I get access to. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Present a role. Four minutes please. haven't started. Don't worry. Fine. Can somebody find him? Yeah. Make presenter. Go ahead. Yeah. At excellent. the bottom. Perfect. Okay. So, yes. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm Louis and I work at the Ceres, um, the space pool of uh, PSL University in Paris um, at the Paris Observatory. And I'm going to present you um, an issue that we had and that we still have somehow uh, with our grant station as a newcomer about um, to demodulate to demodulate uh, data. So um, right now you know of uh, Satwas network and uh, our grant station has been part of this network for more than a year right now. Uh, so we're located in Paris, of course. Um, um, so. Um, with our, our station, we made uh, more than uh, 6,000 uh, observations uh, during this time. And uh, so we can say that we have a quite good um, station uh, at the moment. And thanks to this station, we can uh, receive uh, many, many um, uh, say, um, transmissions from various CubeSats around the world. And we can uh, forward them, uh, forward the data to the SatMux network and um, to the dashboard of um, different CubeSats. Um, so basically, what is, uh, I might say, a good observation? So let's take the example of uh, the no uh, uh, CubeSats that you might know of. It's a uh, weather monitoring uh, um, satellite. And um, basically, what we have here is called the waterfall. And it can be transcripted as a demodulated data here as a raw data, uh, some images we don't, we can see can really clearly, but. Um, it's um, some images of the weather. So um, basically, this is what we can call, um, sorry, a good observation uh, with um, demodulate data accessible on Satwork's uh, network. Um, uh, but uh, recently, um, the team in Grenoble uh, University, so in France, they launched their own satellite called uh, AmicalSat, and they asked us to um, if possible, uh, observe their CubeSat and give them some, some data. Uh, however, we found out that uh, we had some issue with um, their data and especially uh, how to demo demodulate their data because uh, we had some, uh, as we can say, good observation with our clear signal received, but yet uh, we couldn't provide um, uh, to demodulate data. However, an example um, on the SatWorx network of um, we can can call a good um, observation with um, good data. Thanks, uh, Alexander Bars, for this uh, beautiful example here. So we should have um, some some demodulated data on um, on the Amikasat. Um, so um, we know there that we had uh, an issue, uh, but it was not um, on the side of the station. So it was about uh, the decoder uh, of the. Um, for the Amicalsat decoder. So we tried to configure it because um, it was something that we had to um, 
uh, to add to um, just the SatNox um, configuration that was on the station. And uh, yet we had to um, add also a modem, so it could be some modem or Deo Wolf, um, to, um, to complete, I would say, the, um, uh, the demodulate and the decoder solution for AmicalSat. However, uh, we're still struggling at the moment to um, demodulate this data. And as you can see, we have um, some observations, but uh, still um, no data on it. So um, what, uh, what is next? So for the Amical Sat case, we are trying to configure the modem and contact the team or maybe some successful station owners that can maybe help us. But in general, what we can add is uh, we can still um, find a way to implement the specific decoders uh, directly into SatNox. So what was presenting uh, Freddy earlier, thank you. And also uh, maybe create some tutorials for newcomers like us to implement these decoders on the station. And of course, share our problem and give the feedback so everyone can have access to this. So thank you very much, Red. Great, Luis. So for Luis, can you shout out your yes? I want to hear that. Yes. 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 We'll, we'll help them. Very yes. Good. Yes. Good. Of course. <laughs> so nice. Thank you, Luis. So uh, you you'll be around. That's uh, it's very good to have you here, and uh, I hope you join the Matrix channel so we can keep in touch uh, on the longer run. Uh, so I think uh, I think next coming next uh, is. Um, Turker, so Montos is preparing your your slide. I hope you're around. Uh, do I see a name? I am here. Great, super cool. Did I pronounce your name correctly? It's Turker. Turker. It's like English U. It's the same in Turkish. Turkish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you think I'm Danish? Yeah. <laughs> Turkish. Uh, that's good. Uh, so Turkish, your your presentation is coming up. Uh, Montos is preparing it. And uh, you will have four minutes, like everybody. Uh, where are you situated right now? I am in Ankara, in the capital of Turkey, and I'm a member of AMSAT TR. Great, great. Okay. And Montos, uh, the presentation is already there. You, you can select it. Uh huh. I see things popping by. Just give me a second. Oh, okay was already there but uh, okay it's uploading so you have a big presentation so it's really nice so by the time you come next i see you don't have uh, uh no, yeah. no you don't have um slides which is okay then we have manchester cubesat we don't have slides for you either uh, i don't know if you could send them to info francisco barros or antonio antonis or gregory send it to uh, info at uh, ocw.space and then uh, we have, uh, let me just check again, Sunride with uh, Alec Dent. We don't have a, your presentation either. So uh, you'll see soon or enough that Turkish, Turkish uh, tell me your name again. Uh, I, I have to rehearse. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect. Elepterios, thank you. <laughs> You have presenter rights very soon. Seventy percent. Uh, uh, the system is saying it's good. I have a chatbot like, replying. Eighty percent. People get ready. We're going to have an amazing presentation. I, I think you win the prize for the largest PDF uh... <laughs> for four minutes. Uh, larger PDF. That's good. Then you count the megabytes for minutes. It's good. I rehearsed. I promise I will do it in time. I will do my best. No, don't worry. We well, have you have to pressure. subtract now the upload time. <laughs> so one minute goes away. Goes away. <laughs> no, he's kidding. He's kidding. All right. That's the joy of uh, remote work. All right. Converting. It's coming up. Processing. Thank you, Mantos. Okay, one of 15. That was starting again the percentage. This is sick. <laughs> I was not happy. Uh, Mandos, maybe you can see it. the presentation, I think, was already there, but uh, I'm not sure. It actually was there twice already. Uh, yeah. 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 We love your presentation, so we applaud it many times. It's a, it's a big one. But the uh, server storage is getting low now. 
Yeah. <laughs> maybe you can you can start uh, your first uh, slide. Uh, it should be a title slide, so maybe you can start on this. It's going to be ready pretty soon. Uh, not not pretty soon. Two of fifteen ready, Mantos. If you want, I can share my screen in traditional way. If you want. The thing but is that uh, Mantos is in uh, is in the presenter mode, actually uploading your thing. So if you do that, then we have to make sure that you already have your presentation there. You can do it. Six. Then Montos, talk to me. <laughs> talk on the microphone. You can talk in the room. We know what's happening. Well, okay. maybe just try with the slide sharing then. Yeah, uh, yeah screen yeah. sharing. <sighs> we should have done that in the beginning then. Well, we did. But <laughs> you, you did, it was you there. You got the from uh, of me and I. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, it it uploaded, but it processing now. So I, I have no idea. It's the antenna, right? Uh, it it's there already. So it's uh, after it just ah. Uh. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. I was doing it. Uh, okay, then you do it. Yeah. Sorry. Select confirm. That builds up the excitement for the slide. Yeah, yes. Right. Wow. It's over there. So. Okay, the screen is yours in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Türker from Amstad PR and Metu. Today I will introduce our study on the optimization of the UHF turnstile antennas for CubeSat platforms. Uh, a turnstile antenna consists of perpendicularly placed dipole antennas in phase quadrature. It's circularly polarized, and this is important for onboard antennas to minimize the effect of Faraday rotation and orientation alignment loss. It's possible to change the radiation pattern of turnstile antennas by the optimization of the uh, orientation of its arms. Thanks to its compact mechanical structure, uh, this antenna type is very suitable to be placed on board. Uh, this is the in initial sim simulation setup for the turnstile antenna uh, on top of a, a single U CubeSat uh, chassis uh, made by a metal material uh, without any rotation or tilt for the antenna arms. This is parallel and perpendicular to each other. Right hand side, you see the phases of the antenna arms. There is 90 degrees of phase shift between the ports. Do, do you see the screen? I lost the screen. I kind of don't uh, see like a weird logo. Can you go to the next slide, maybe? The conversion was, uh, yeah, I think it's the conversion problem. That is the seven megabytes. Yeah, yeah seven megabytes, yeah. <laughs> that was the video. Anyway, it, um, it's a simulation result, uh, which is optimized towards upper pole. As you see, the antenna is radiating towards upper pole. And by changing the orientation of the antenna arms, we can change the radiation pattern towards downwards or uh, with another orientation set for rotation and tilt we can make the antenna to radiate uh, nearly uh, isotropic uh, equal to uh, every direction and in here uh, you see the design of the speed circuit for the antenna after the simulations we continue to, stu uh, to study to prototype the design antenna it's our first circ uh, feed circuit design at the left hand side. It consists of a RF transformer and two hybrid couplers from mini circuits. Uh, its aim is to divide the power to uh, four equal uh, signals, uh, equal power signals, and 90 degrees phase shift between uh, neighboring ports. And this is the fabrication result for the uh, antenna. And you can see it in my hand. This is. It's made by JLC PCB in China with FR4. And these are the simulation and measurement results. Uh, I will pass uh, very quickly. As you can see, at the left hand side simulation, right hand side measurement, they're very similar to each other. And uh, the fabrication is very successful when we compare with the simulation results. You can check from the PDF later. And. I'm not seeing it again, I think. Huh. OK. And this is the measurement setup at Anacoic Chamber in university. We have put uh, the feed circuit on top of a, a single unit uh, generic CubeSat. 
and placed it in Anakoyuk Chamber of Middle East Technical University, then measured radiation. The most important thing to remind you is don't uh, always rely on the uh, data sheets. We needed a, a tuning procedure for the antennas because they were not working in the desired frequency bands. And at the left hand side, you see the measurement and simulation results on top of each other. Uh, they are very similar to each other and uh, they are radiating in the desired direction. Uh, in this uh, measurement setup, we used uh, upper pole uh, radiating setup, uh, in which uh, I show you in the first slide, first radiation setup. And also, this is the axial ratio measurement. This is the measurement of uh, circular polarization. It's very successful with uh, around one decibels. And uh, as a result, uh, we prototyped a UHF turnstile antenna module and we optimized the radiation with different requirements. We will continue with a dual band turnstile antenna, uh, including a VHF, uh, and we will optimize feed circuits more uh, and we will work on antenna arms. And at the end, we will uh, do deployment mechanisms and uh, we will release the project outputs uh, under the name of open source CubeSat antenna project later. Up to now, we are uh, developing it privately. And at the end, I want to thank uh, AMSAT TR members, especially Koray and Eral, who helped me on fabrication, and also Professor Sanjay Koch, uh, who helped us on measurements. And I want to thank Minnesota and Virtual Electronic for free samples. Feel free to contact me. I am always open for collaboration. Also, the uh, other, uh, other, other authors, uh, and I want to thank you uh, for organization. Everything is nice. Thank you. Well done, Tucker. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your activity. Sorry for the presentation in Cup. Uh, I'm sure you usually had videos. So please stay around. Uh, very glad to, to help you having this kickstart on your uh, open sourcing. It's always good to start open source right from the beginning. But first, before you go, uh, do you get a big yes from everybody? Yes. 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 Cool. Yeah. Very good. So uh, keep in touch with the community. Thank you. See you soon. So next in line is coding space with uh, Basam Al Feli. Um, Basam, are you around? Can you turn on your microphone? I know you don't have a presentation, yeah. so we'll just put uh, another slide. All right. Cool. Where do you stand, Basam? So greeting from Kuwait. I'm joining uh, everybody from uh, Kuwait City, Kuwait. Nice, nice. All right. So uh, this the screen is yours. Please tell us more about Code in Space. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to let you know about a new opportunity, which is called Code in Space. Code in Space initiative is the mission of Kuwait's first satellite. Um, known as QMR Kuwait, CubeSat. Uh, it is an educational initiative uh, of orbital space. QMR Kuwait is one new amateur CubeSat expected to be launched in Q2 2021. It is intended to be an open access CubeSat for students from around the world. Um, code in space objectives um, mainly to increase awareness among students about current opportunities and challenges in the satellite industry um, to encourage solutions to current challenges faced by the satellite industry. Also to encourage and empower students to design and develop new concepts that could contribute to the advancement of satellite technology. Um, also to increase awareness about new space or known as space 2.0 and its potential impact on humanity. So what are the benefits to students? Um, there are many benefits, including learn about satellite flight software and embedded systems, explore a topic of your interest, um, and learn more uh, about it in, in real life setting, learn about satellite technology and understand satellite communications, um, also gain experience in system design processes and protocols in engineering projects, uh, develop new solutions, uh, whether they're products or services uh, that utilizes uh, satellite technology. Um, uh, also develop leadership skills, uh, such as teamwork, decision making, and project management. Um, also demonstrate capabilities to university admissions, 
and future uh, employers. Um, of course, um, there are many topics 